Australia, it's far more than a land of spectacular extremes. Certainly, it is blessed with infinite geographic wonders. But explore any of these territories, and you'll discover why Australia is increasingly becoming the last frontier. The reason is Australia's isolation, a 50 million year break from the rest of the world, which has allowed an amazingly diverse group of animals to evolve. Now, as entire species come under increasing threat in Africa, Europe, Asia and the Americas, Australia is fast becoming the final bastion in terms of wildlife, with most species flourishing. Two of Australia's classic icons, a breaking surf over a golden shoreline and a mob of kangaroos. There are some 50 different kinds of kangaroos and wallabies in Australia, but none is more widely seen than this species, the Eastern Grey. These are the roos that thrive along Australia's eastern seaboard, although it's quite rare to see them like this, close to breaking waves. The attraction here, in the Murramurang National Park, are the shoots of small plants that are growing on the beach. Some 300 roos travel and eat in this mob with the mothers normally giving birth once a year. Joey's emerging from the pouch around spring. This will be his home for the next 10 months, a period in which he'll grow to quite a size, emerging more and more to eat grass, but always returning to the safety and comfort of mother's pouch. Even when he's left the pouch, he keeps returning for a drink of milk for up to six more months. It's after he's left his mother altogether that he quickly begins to assert himself. He's challenging another young buck, the winner getting to mate with an oestrus female. It's a vigorous encounter, one which will become even more ritualized in the years ahead, fights lasting for hours to decide the head of the mob. There's a marvel of nature just off the Queensland coast, known as Fraser Island, the world's largest sand island. It's also the home to hundreds of dingoes. This dingo is on the hunt. Once he's spotted his quarry, he pursues it like the Asiatic wolf from which he's descended. Where his mainland cousins concentrate on small game like wallabies and bandicoots, the Fraser Island dingoes have adapted their diet to match their watery environment.
Like all wild dogs, this dingo is constantly on the move, patrolling his home territory at an exhausting pace. Off the beach, the dingo marks out his territory by rolling in his favorite patch. Once he's established this home range, he rarely strays out of it. His territory contains many of the fresh water holes that cover Fraser Island. While he frequently travels alone, he often hunts in a pack, and this he organizes by calling in his family. His howling has been effective, summonsing his partner and two of their pups born last winter. Unlike domestic dogs, which can deliver two litters each year, dingoes are contained to just one litter annually. While the pups have grown large enough to fend for themselves, they still prefer the company and security of their own family. That's because females have been known to eat the pups from an opposing family. Like all dog packs, they love to play, finding their way back onto the beach in the cool of sunset, where they'll cavort before yet another night of hunting. There's an irresistible allure about the Great Barrier Reef. The world's largest system of coral reefs is alive with some 350 types of corals. Fish life is prolific, with almost 2,000 different species identified on the reef. But one phenomena here, which beats all others, is the synchronized mass spawning of coral that takes place on just a few nights each year. One frequently sighted creature on the seabeds of the Great Barrier Reef is the loggerhead turtle, using her pronounced beak to feed on algae. Propelling herself with huge clawless flippers, this loggerhead is about to leave the mobility of the water. 
On shore, every movement is a struggle as she inches her way up the beach for an act she'll go through up to five times each year. She's laying around 50 eggs and will leave them to incubate in the warmth of the sun. This process of nature will see hundreds of newly hatched babies waddling back into the water only six weeks later. One barrier reef traveler who's far more elusive is this gigantic whale shark, longer and heavier than a bus. Mercifully, he's completely harmless, sucking in plankton and microscopic plants through his massive mouth. These whale sharks normally spend their days at great depths rising to shallower levels only when the plankton he feeds on rises. But not all of the reef family are quite so friendly. These coral seas are teeming with big schools of fish, providing ample feed for the most feared of predators. Many of the shark species that cruise the waters of the Great Barrier Reef are brutal killers. 350 million years of evolution has honed this assassin to perfection, from his sleek, streamlined body to his batteries of needle-sharp teeth, all designed and proportioned for just one purpose, to kill. Sensing an easy victim, dozens of silver-tipped sharks have massed on the outer barrier reef. Their target, an injured tuna, It's a typically vicious attack, one that once marked them as primitive creatures. The latest findings, however, are that they have surprisingly large brains and complex behavioral patterns. In the vast, lush wilderness that covers the eastern tip of Australia lives a most unusual collection of creatures. Giant, flightless birds like this cassowary roam. Their legs so powerful they've been known to disembowel a man. Once a year they mate the female squatting on the rainforest floor while the male attempts to seduce her. This position of intimacy allows us to see how they've been equipped with their own tough helmets, like a medieval warrior. While hers remains unscathed, allowing her to crash through thick undergrowth, his has been broken in a fight with another bird. The result of their mating session is a superb solitary chick who maintains his black and yellow striped covering for the first three months of his life. High above the cassowaries, a most extraordinary marsupial, the tree kangaroo. Most of his day is spent sleeping in the treetops. Such is his adaptation to this arboreal existence that he climbs upward with great ease using very sharp claws and a set of upper limbs almost as large and powerful as his hind legs. At such heights, his diet is mostly confined to the leaves of the very trees in which he lives. In 
Queensland's Lamington National Park, around O'Reilly's Rainforest Guest House, are the remnants of one of the oldest forests in the world. A giant forest of Antarctic beech trees, which once covered most of Eastern Australia. The lush rainforests here harbour many fascinating birds and creatures. Like this orange-eyed tree frog, who hibernates during the winter and only reappears during the wet summer months. The eastern yellow robin, who's fastidious about keeping her nest in order. The crimson rosella, who feasts on the seeds of rainforest plants like the acronochia. And a paddy melon and her baby, nourishing themselves on some lush native violets. Rarely seen are spotted quail thrushes, these two babies waiting patiently in their bar until mother returns. While more common are the tawny frog moths. Their body positioned and camouflaged to hide amongst the branches. and white ibis, who live and feed high above the rainforest. One species which thrives in this rainforest is the regent bowerbird. This mother is trying to feed her offspring a dried sultana. Time and again she tries to force feed them, but it's a taste and texture they clearly can't digest. She has more success with the red berries of the snake vine. Within three weeks, the young ones are old enough to leave the nest, with their first flight a thrilling moment. Still in their nests are these tiny mistletoe birds. They're growing in a nest their parents have made out of the empty sacks of spider's eggs and soft plant down, wrapped in cobwebs. As the youngsters scream for food, their parents return with the sticky sweet fruits of the mistletoe tree. It's a healthy diet, which sees the babies pass the seeds out within 20 minutes, a process aided by mother. The other bird species that bring so much colour to the rainforest are rainbow lorikeets. They congregate in significant numbers wherever trees and shrubs are in flower using their brush-like tongues to gather nectar and pollen. They're an extremely amorous bird, spending long periods being affectionate with their partners. Having spent up to 19 hours each day sleeping, koalas make the most of their waking hours by eating. Their daily diet is around a kilogram of eucalyptus leaves, a potent mix of oil and other chemicals that would kill almost all other animals. As the female eats, the male of her species is on the warpath. Come breeding time, these docile fellows become raging bulls, challenging any male koala that enters their territory.
They're off to battle, the territory's dominant males going in for the attack. These are vicious encounters, sharp claws and teeth exacting brutal punishment. The fact that they're up to three meters above the ground doesn't appear to matter to these furry gladiators. Without disengaging for one second, these sparring males finally fall to the ground. Like two sumo wrestlers, they grapple one another, fur flying, teeth snapping into flesh. For 30 minutes, they wear each other down, trying to get that perfect stranglehold. It's almost a fight to the death, the winner becoming the dominant male who can claim all females nearby as part of his harem. Some of those females are on heat. The bobbing, hiccuping movement displayed by this young lady shows that she's extremely estrous. But not all female koalas are so keen. This female has just given birth and is in no mood to mate. She fights with vigor to retain her honor. Undeterred, the male fights back, biting her on the shoulder to bring her to submission. There follows a mating session that lasts no more than two minutes. After a pregnancy of just one month and six months growing in the pouch, the newly emerged baby has grown plenty of fur. Over the next few months, the young one will make stunning progress. As his weight increases, so too does his assertiveness. He's roaming more and more from mother, exploring large distances on open ground. These are days of increasing freedom, more and more time spent alone, exploring. And at the end of these sessions, the security of mother. It's the call of the Australian bush. This chorus of raucous laughter from one group of kookaburras proclaims their territory to neighboring clans. This species is literally known as the laughing kookaburra and survives by preying on skinks and other small reptiles. He's also known to raid the nests of other birds, battering newly hatched chicks until their bodies are tender enough to tear apart. It's this cannibalistic characteristic that enranges other birds, like these woolly wagtails who pester the kookaburra until he moves on.
His cousin, the blue-winged kookaburra, is distinguished by his pale eyes and bright blue wings. He too feeds on tiny reptiles with a particular fondness for small snakes. Other brightly coloured members of the kingfisher family are to be found right along Australia's eastern seaboard. One of those, the azure kingfisher, bobs his head repeatedly as if sizing up a fish. Then, at lightning speed, he dives. Over and over he plunges until he emerges triumphant. One creature he'll stay well clear of is the echidna. Her fortress of sharp spines keeps all predators at bay, although she's able to flatten those during mating sessions. What happens next is a marvel. As she goes about her daily routine, she lays a small egg directly into a pouch on the underside of her body. The egg will hatch 10 days later, although the baby does not emerge for another two months. In the meantime, she uses her long snout to find her favorite meal of ants. And if threatened, she simply uses her powerful claws to bury herself in the soil, completely disappearing from view within two minutes. As darkness sets in on the Australian bush, one adorable creature of the night emerges. This shy chap is the sugar glider, who glides up to 50 meters by stretching its arms. Sugar gliders relish the nectar and buds of flowering trees like this bottle brush. Throughout the night, he'll forage like this flying from tree to tree until his taste for such sweet delights is well satiated. In the foothills of Victoria's Dandenong Ranges lives the animal world's greatest copycat The superb lyrebird is the master of mimicry. This male bird is capable of 24 different calls, some of them very recognizable. One call he mimics almost constantly is that of the stone curlew. Another of his vocal tricks is to merge many different calls together, one after another. So skilled is he in recreating sounds that this bird quickly mastered the sound of our photographer's camera. and the sounds he vocalizes most are several versions of his own territorial call. It's all a tactic to win the affection of a female.
His displays take place on territorial mounds, which he builds wherever the sun breaks through the rainforest cover. This allows the sun to enhance the silver-white colorings on his 16 tail feathers. Then begins his dance routine. Tail feathers arched over his head, body shaking, as he tries to impress the female. To all of this, she appears disinterested, preferring instead to scratch away for more insects. Undeterred, his performance becomes even more invigorated, earning him the reputation as the leading song and dance man of the bird world. The island state of Tasmania is now the only territory in Australia where this fierce looking marsupial runs wild. Appropriately named the Tasmanian Devil, these powerful carnivores feed on medium sized animals and birds. Such are their eating habits, they've been likened to hyenas, with jaws so powerful they've been known to demolish all but the skull of a full-sized cow. Once their meal is threatened, they become very aggressive, scrapping loudly with one another. They're even more tenacious with the very last scrap of flesh. It's only when their young are born that they quieten down, up to four babies emerging from the pouch after four months. In the creeks and rivers of Australia's hinterland lives one of the world's most remarkable animals. The platypus is so unusual that the first specimens were thought to be fakes, what with his furry coat, rubbery beak, webbed feet and beaver-like tail. What we learn following this platypus is that she spends far more time on the surface than below. The banks of this river in the Warawong Sanctuary are etched with her nests, into which she digs a long burrow and lays two or three eggs. She emerges from that burrow in the early morning and late afternoon to hunt, diving repeatedly to find small crustaceans and mollusks. Hers is a voracious appetite, one which sees her consume the equivalent of half her own weight every night. To search out her feed, she closes her eyes underwater and is guided by her very sensitive muzzle. She works feverishly to find food, surfacing just long enough to breathe before diving again and again. Another prominent burrow dweller is the wombat. This is a juvenile of the species. Less than half size, this lad is already as big as a medium-sized dog. He 
he's strictly a vegetarian. Powerful jaws capable of gnawing through the toughest of plants. He's also a strong digger. His bulldozer tactics creating huge warrens, often longer than a very long truck. Despite its reputation as a slow mover, this juvenile scurries about at great speed. They're also loners, as his big brother demonstrates. He prefers to graze by himself, his preference being coarse, high fiber grasses. Once he's found a suitable patch of vegetation, he'll remain there for some time, eating hungrily. There are numerous other fascinating creatures to be found in the Australian bush. The red-necked wallaby is fastidious in personal hygiene. The bandicoot, distinguished by his long, slender snout. the very rare and fast-moving brush-tailed betong. And his cousin, the rufous betong, both small kangaroo-like marsupials. These mini marsupials are potaroos. While potaroos are now rare on the Australian mainland, those that have survived are healthy procreators. One star of Australia's waterways is the black swan. Right from birth, newly hatched chicks are so alert and mobile, they feed themselves. They grow quickly, the down of the black swan chicks darkening in color, so that by four months they're independent. Fully grown, black swans will spend long parts of each day washing themselves, an affair that's often very boisterous. Partnership displays by black swans are sheer poetry. These birds will remain paired for several seasons, with rival males asserting their territorial rights with slow, stately parades. Billabongs and waterholes of central Australia attract a host of wildlife. Brightly coloured grass finches come in to drink every few hours. Eighteen species of these finches have been identified in Australia all displaying their characteristic of habitually cuddling together in close physical contact. Away from the billabong, 
the desert blooms. The hardy Sturtz desert pea is a survivor in the harshest of outback conditions. And on the arid desert floor, signs of impending life. Seven eggs, almost as big as bowling balls. They belong to the world's second largest bird, the emu. It's the male of the species who incubates the eggs, a part-time job he conducts between feeding sessions. After 60 days of incubation, cracked eggshells are all that remain. As the newly born chicks forage for their first insects, their black and white striped plumage will be replaced by the deep brown feathers of their parents. And once again, while the chicks are brooding like this, it's their father who looks after them. All of this activity is watched over by the Lord of the Australian skies, the wedge-tailed eagle. With a wingspan wider than an average car, this eagle is one of the world's largest and is known to kill baby kangaroos. It's that fear of predation which makes this female red kangaroo carry her joey for so long. For the first year, her youngster will hide away in the most uncomfortable of positions, even when his legs have grown way too big. So strong is the bond between mother and child that affection is displayed long after he's left her pouch. Not only does she preen her joey throughout the day, but she's forever trying to rid herself of menacing bush ticks. It's a barren land they live in, so much so that the dried vegetation needs several minutes of chewing before it's ready to digest. And she's forever having to extract sharp thorns from her legs. But if any of the red kangaroos is to be admired, it's the male of the species. Not only is the kangaroo the largest of all marsupials, but the red is by far the biggest. His enormous size is only fully appreciated when he stands upright, revealing a body higher than a four-wheel drive car. Even at rest, he displays an arrogance that few creatures of the outback can afford. He's fought hard to become leader of his group of roos and now sleeps in a position of vulnerability that few other males would dare to adopt. When he does rejoin his family, the precise color differences between the sexes becomes truly apparent. Where he's clearly a rich, rusty brown, the females are more a smoky blue. And when they do decide to move on, their unique method of motivation is to be admired. They've been clocked at speeds of up to 70 kilometers an hour, not quite as fast as a cheetah, but a speed they're able to maintain for much longer periods of time. Our final experience in the Australian wilderness is the vast flooded coastal plains of Kakadu in Australia's far north, an area that attracts tens of thousands of birds. The flurry of bird activity reaches a crescendo in the annual wet season.
One endearing species is to be found among the water lilies that choke many of Kakadu's billabongs. This is the extraordinary jacana or lotus bird. These floating lily pads would collapse under the weight of any other bird. But the jacana has enormously elongated toes, which allow him to spread his weight over a large area. Travelling this way means he can find the many insects, snails and other smaller life forms that congregate just under the rim of the lily pad. Where the jacana is one of Kakadu's smallest birds, the jabiru is one of the largest. The tall and stately jabiru is Australia's only stork. His large legs and long beak allow him to pursue prey as large as snakes. Another fascinating resident of Kakadu is the Brolga. These long-legged cranes mate for life, reinforcing their bonds with their partners by displays of dancing. But if any creature reigns supreme in this wildlife paradise, it's the one found lurking amidst the water lilies. The Australian saltwater crocodile is one of the world's largest and most formidable predators, extremely dangerous even to humans. Actually, his title of saltwater crocodile is somewhat of a misnomer in that he also thrives in freshwater and has been found long distances from the coast during the wet season. They grow to enormous sizes here in Kakadu, lying perfectly motionless in wait for prey. One frightening phenomena is when they open their massive jaws, a process that allows them to cool their brain through evaporative cooling while the rest of the body is heating. This perspective allows us to examine his giant teeth, which intermesh perfectly when the jaws are closed allowing him to hold on firmly to whatever he grasps. Once they decide to move, it's with great power and speed. The crocodiles of northern Australia are voracious meat eaters. This curious jabiru promises a perfect meal. The hunt is at first played out in slow motion. The crocodile moves back into the water to hide. The jabiru investigates. Then at lightning speed he attacks, smashing his powerful jaws into the body of the jabiru. It's a big meal, even for him. He prefers to drag it back into the water to tear it apart slowly. But despite that attack, other jabiroos can be luckier. This one stalks the shoreline very close to six large crocs. Right along this part of Kakadu, the crocodiles are massing, their numbers increasing rapidly after hunting was banned 20 years ago. 
and with so many mouths to feed, the big population of birds here are the most vulnerable targets. Our final experience in Kakadu shows what awesome power these crocodiles possess. Two large males are about to clash. While it's been a duel without either a clear-cut winner or loser, both crocodiles signal what they believe is their own personal victory in this fascinating land of abundant wildlife.